So every time I've been to this creek, I've fished, you know, with like bait casters, spinning rods. But today, I'm using just one rod. That one rod being a fly rod. This is Lena's rod. She mainly fly fishes. Yesterday, she was out of out of her element, and not today. I'm out of my element. But always want to come here and throw a fly. A lot of you guys requested that I should go back here and throw a fly. So that's what we're doing today. So I misjudged how much rain we got. Apparently, pool is up by about a foot, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. The farther I go down, the more and more I think that this is going to be kind of a challenging day of fishing. I'm not saying that the small don't love the current and the high pool, but just it's a lot more difficult to catch them when you've got more water. You know, you feel. Well, so far I've seen two surf, actually three surface. Not specifically sure if the first two were smallmouth. The one I just saw definitely was a smallmouth. The issue is, is this river or creek whatever you want to call it the river layout's a little bit different than it was last time i was here it was like low pool was summer not a whole lot of precipitation but i guess after a few rains um the water rises who would have known so <laughs> we're about uh i want to say like maybe six inches eight inches above normal maybe or maybe this is a regular pool and i've always fished at low pool i don't know Smallmouth are eluding my fly. Why are they doing that? Oh, I just had one. Shoot. Oh, now I got a branch. Sick. Oh, wow. Broke off my whole leader. Oh, you got one. Look at that. What is that? What is that? D uh, chub, creek chub. It's a creek chub. You recall one of this? No, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. No. Can you hold it for you? Creek chub, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Creek chub. <laughs> On a stonefly, actually. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Ooh. Well, I found something pretty interesting here. This is actually going to help me a lot for today's bite. I'll show you what it is. So this right here is actually a claw of a crawfish. This really is gonna help me out today. Not only for the fact that A, they could be eating craws, but B, what color fly I should be throwing for these fish just because you're trying to match the hatch in a situation where the water's clear and where these fish literally feed on pretty much like three main things, insects, uh, I blank for a second, insects, minnows, and little crawdads. Maybe these fish are feeding on larger craws as opposed to smaller ones. I don't know. Keep an eye out for stuff like this if you're doing this kind of fishing just because it can really help you narrow down a bite. All right. Oh no! Oh my God, you guys could probably see that on my GoPro. I had a nice bite there. God. That was a smallmouth. I've had a few bites today and they've all been questionable, but that was 100% a small jaw. It's a good sign though. It's better than not getting bit, I suppose. There's so much bait in front of me right now. Like a whole school of miniature bait. Peric sized bait. Whole school of lettuce in front of me right now. Oh, uh, I don't know why that's so funny. It just is. There we go. They gotta be over here. There's one. Oh, I'm on. I'm finally on. There we go. First creek smallie on the fly. Oh, it's a beautiful one too. Look at this dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> they don't get super big in here, but uh, that, is a, that is definitely a tiny one. Just using a little, uh, I think this is called a conehead woolly bugger. And like a brownish color. I noticed that crawfish had a real dark brown. Finally, finally, finally picked one up. These creek smallies are so much fun. Feels so good to finally catch a small. That is the hardest I've ever had to work for one of these fish in this creek. Mm. Yep, got a nice knot here. Wow, did a really good job on this one. Like a really good job. Holy, oh, there we go. Got it, solid. Got him. Oh, yes. That was so textbook. Please be a smallmouth. Oh, it's a good one. Threw it right by that bluff wall. 
and he cranked it. Oh, that's a good one. That is not a bad fish. One of the better size fish I've caught out of this creek for sure. They don't get too big in here. Biggest I think Perrick and I ever caught is like just under three pounds. So look how much this fish is fighting on this five weight. Oh yeah, that's a solid, solid fish. He's just staying in the current. Stay pinned, stay pinned, stay pinned, stay pinned. Yeah, that's that's a decent fish for here. Look how pretty that fish is giant. Look how big the tail is compared to everything else. That's what these creek smallies look like. They're super, super, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, super hardy. These fish are super hardy. Nice dark tail, beautiful bronze belly. Quality, quality fish. Quality creek fish. Wow, right on that little break. You see right there that, well, you probably can't see. It's a little far, but anyway, there's this giant bluff wall. Right in front of me is a divot, kind of where there's some slack water. So that water is like totally not moving while this whole main section is just, you know, blowing out this entire creek. It's a nice little ambush spot for these fish, and that's exactly where I cast. Real specific. You have to get like right on their heads right now, apparently. Summertime, they'll chase after a lure, but I guess right now you have to get right on top of them. God, when the water's low, this is like the best spot. Perrick and I sat here and caught like 20 fish. Oh, you got one. You finally got one. <laughs> Smallmouth, nice. Go. It is. That's like an average size here out of here though. They don't get too big. I say that just because I catch small fish, so it makes me feel better, but well, she just caught her first ever small, like first ever. So we accomplished it. She finally caught her first small, not like the best first small to catch, but I'm pretty sure my first small was like really tiny. We're gonna start fishing our way back down now, being that we've I'm just looking at that current. I just know all the other spots up ahead are just going to be blown to uh, blown to bits. It's going to be really, really strong moving current. So we're going to fish this pool for a bit because we know there's fish here and then head back. Which side did you come? Oh, you went up under. Oh, you went up over, did you? Right there, it's deep, but right here it's shallower, I guess. Well, broke my old GoPro Hero 4. Oh, there we go. It was making this weird noise. Maybe it's working fine now. The, the screen is pretty much destroyed. Oh, nope, the touchscreen still works. Anyway, this was completely submerged underwater for about five seconds. Well, I ducked under that tree over there and I like went like chest first and just dipped the whole thing in the water. So this may or, oh, nope, it's broken. I was about to say, it may or may not be broken, but it just shut off. Um, yeah, that sucks. Luckily, the SD card should still be fine. That sucks, though. Okay, well, I was going to fish on the way back, but definitely not because I no longer have a GoPro. <sighs> so, we're right now making our trek back to the car because it's getting late. But I wanted to stop real quick to show you this little guy right here. This right here is that like smallmouth candy. This is the perfect size for these smallmouth. These these little crawdads still have pretty soft shells and uh, they're like bite size. They're like literally snack size. Ah, he's pinching me. Little snack size bites for these small jaws. Oh, just pull. There you go. Well, that about concludes today's creek mission. It wasn't as good as I thought or at least anticipated. Usually we come here and we catch like 50 fish a piece, but at least we all caught fish today quite a few creek chubs. We both caught smallmouth. She caught her first smallmouth, which is huge, which is big. Everyone needs to catch a smallmouth in my opinion. Everyone in my opinion needs to look for creeks like this. I can't tell you how many times I've stumbled upon just like random creeks with largemouth and smallmouth. And when you find something like this, it's it's like a real gem. With that being said, if you find something like this, definitely try to take care of it. You know, don't leave your line, don't leave garbage. Don't mean to be like sentimental here, but this is a situation where this creek is pretty much, like honest to God, pristine. Like I did not see a single piece of trash today. I'm not exaggerating. That's the reason why it's so good. It's because it's not uh, it's not a place where people keep fish all the time. It's not a place where people litter. It's well kept up. So just something to keep in mind when you're at the next creek or something like that. <sighs> um, I still need to finish yesterday's video, as I always do. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos because Rob comes into town. That should be interesting. I think then after that, he gets his boat wrapped in the uh, in the Hello Kitty boat wrap pattern. So I'm just so excited. Next month's just going to be so much fun. We got a lot going on. But uh, yeah. And as always, keep fishing. Never stop.